In a small town, mysterious disappearances haunt its residents. A group of friends embark on a getaway to a remote cabin where they face sinister forces far more terrifying than they can imagine. On a cold, rainy night, the gas station clerk mops the floor while listening to music. Outside, a terrified woman named Nancy pounds on the doors, asking for help. Instead of letting her in, the clerk switches off the open sign and sends her away. The woman then runs to the phone booth by the store and calls the police. She frantically explains her husband and son were taken, but the power in the phone booth goes out and cuts the call. Lights flash around the phone booth, and the woman screams after a blinding bright glow. Seconds later, the clerk exits the store and looks for the woman. He walks to where the phone booth once stood, but the cement platform is all that's left. The frightened clerk turns to walk back to the store when the phone booth drops back down and crashes on the platform. A few hours later, Sheriff Murphy arrives at the gas station and finds Nancy's wallet in the rubble. He wonders where she could be before looking up at the sky. In an apartment in the city, April finishes a phone call with her mother as she packs a weekend bag. She asks her boyfriend, Kyle, if he's sure he wants to come with her, and he says he's looking forward to relaxing after a tough semester. Then, April gets a video call from her father, who can't believe her mother is making April drive to the cabin to take photos. He believes his ex-wife is only selling the house to spite him before asking his daughter to take a few things from the place. April lists them down, including a double-barrel shotgun in the basement. Moments later, their friend, Seth, calls through April's intercom, asking what's taking them so long. Kyle didn't inform April he'd invited Seth, his girlfriend Lex, and childhood friend Melanie to the cabin. On the ride to the cabin, Seth lights a firework inside the car and fires it out of the sunroof. Kyle tells him to quit doing it, but Seth tells him not to worry because no one else is on the road. Minutes later, Sheriff Murphy pulls them over and warns them to behave while in town. The sheriff lets them go, so the group heads to their destination. April sees the for sale sign outside the cabin and looks away somberly. Inside the cabin, Melanie remembers the last time they were there as she watches her dog Rusty happily running in the yard. April and her parents used to go there every summer when she was younger. April heads out the door to grab her camera, and Kyle asks her if she needs any help. She declines and avoids a kiss from her boyfriend. Minutes later, the friends drink booze and use substances by the pool. Later that day, Sheriff Murphy investigates a pig carcass on a local farm. The cut on its body is clean, precise, and not like a wild animal attack. Back in the car, Sheriff Murphy looks at a picture of his wife and continues to ponder the strange happenings in town. On a hiking trail, April and Melanie take Rusty for a walk, and Melanie tells her to consider taking Kyle to New York with her. She expresses her apprehensions about marrying and having kids with her childhood sweetheart. Suddenly, Rusty barks at something in the trees and runs into a gated property. April and Melanie enter a greenhouse with an illegal plant farm inside the seemingly abandoned property. As they're about to leave, a man wearing a gas mask and wielding an axe mistakes them for trespassers until he recognizes April. He removes the mask and introduces himself as April's dad's friend, Travis. Inside Travis' house are weapons and hardware from his time as a soldier in Vietnam. He shows them a printed image of a comet-like object captured by his thermal cameras, which he thinks is a military aircraft. He then spews government conspiracies and explains why he chooses to live off the grid. Later, in the cabin, Kyle speaks to April in private inside the bedroom, where he gets on one knee and proposes to her. She wasn't expecting the proposal and meant to tell him about her job offer in New York this weekend, thinking it'd just be them. She declines his proposal, and he storms out of the room where their friends pop champagne and throw confetti, expecting a different outcome. In the police station, Sheriff Murphy watches security cam footage from the gas station. He sees Nancy in the phone booth, but the video is corrupted for a few seconds before it returns to footage of the missing phone booth. He scans the video frame by frame and finds one with the phone booth seemingly floating in the air. On the cabin balcony, Kyle asks April why she declined his proposal. She explains that she doesn't believe in marriage as Kyle does because of how her parents turned out. In the middle of the argument, a comet-like object flies above the cabin and crashes a few hundred meters away. A few minutes later, their friends drive to Toward the crash site, which Kyle thinks is an airplane, but Seth is puzzled by its red glow. As they approach the crash site, they discover a disc-shaped spacecraft. Kyle holds a piece of debris and notes how light it weighs. Lex freaks out and heads back to the car but sees footprints in the mud going toward the trees, so she alerts the others. Back at the cabin, the friends gather in the living room during a thunderstorm. Lex wants to leave as soon as possible, and April agrees because the footprints are headed for the cabin. Kyle tries to get everyone to calm down, but the electricity goes out, and they panic. April suggests they check the breaker in the basement. In the basement, Kyle tries to fix the breaker, but he gets shocked when the screwdriver 
touches it, creating a spark. They then hear Rusty barking from the floor above them, followed by a few seconds of silence. Suddenly, a loud crash startles the group, and Rusty starts barking again. April remembers her dad's shotgun and loads it. They hear a commotion from above, followed by Rusty's whining. The friends quietly leave the basement and find the front door open. Kyle closes it, and they continue checking the rest of the house. While April stands with her back to the balcony, Kyle sees a tall gray alien on the other side of the glass door. She sees the look on his face, so she quickly turns around and shoots. Outside the house, the group finds black blood near the pool and the alien lifelessly floating in the shallow water. Immediately, the friends drive away from the cabin, but come across a large fallen tree on the road. Then, April, Kyle, and Seth get out of the car to look closer. Seconds later, Kyle notes that the rain has stopped, but when Seth walks back to the car, he sees a wall of rain a few inches from his face. He looks up at the sky, and suddenly, everything around them is cloaked under an ominous red light. They run back to the car, but as Kyle turns the ignition, the car's electronics explode. Moments later, Lex gets out of the car, but instead of escaping, she stands still and looks up at the source of the light. Above Lex, an alien spacecraft shines a bright light beam at her. She floats off the ground for a few seconds, before getting suctioned into the spaceship. Her friends watch in horror as she vanishes, and the group runs for their lives into the woods. Elsewhere, Sheriff Murphy inspects an abandoned campsite where he finds a video camera on the RV floor and sees the last video of Nancy, her husband, Jeffrey, and their son, Maddie. He watches footage of a red glowing object in the sky and a beam of light hitting Maddie and lifting him off the ground. All of a sudden, the sheriff hears a noise from the bedroom, and he goes to check it. Inside the bedroom, Nancy pops out of a closet and swings a bat at the sheriff but misses. She cowers to the corner, looking disheveled and traumatized, so he assures her he won't hurt her. She says the aliens took Jeffrey and Maddie and performed experiments on the abducted humans. She claims that the aliens held her down and put terrible thoughts in her head. The friends end up in Travis's house, where Seth shows him the video of the crash site and tells him everything that's happened. Minutes later, Travis tells them a long-believed conspiracy theory that the government has a treaty with the extraterrestrials since the Roswell incident. The government allows aliens to abduct humans if they leave most of the Earth's population alone. Both sides have one rule to follow, which is not to engage. Travis thinks April broke the treaty when she shot the alien, and they want revenge. Melanie interrupts the conversation when Travis' sonar detects a spacecraft approaching. After a few seconds, the spacecraft disappears from the sonar. They think it flew away, but Travis says it just landed. Suddenly, all the electronics explode, and the power goes out. Travis wields a machine gun, activates a glow stick, and tells them to move. The group carries glow sticks and runs through the greenhouse. Travis instructs April to go down a path back to the cabin, preferring to stay and defend his home. As Travis walks back, he sees a perfectly cut circle from the house into the greenhouse. Behind him, a gangly alien stalks in the shadows and hides before he turns to shoot. He hides under a table and shoots up when the alien is on the table above him. Black blood seeps through the bullet holes on the table and drips on his face. Convinced he's taken the alien out, Travis crawls from under the table. Then suddenly, a four-fingered alien grabs his head. At the campsite, Nancy tells Sheriff Murphy to help the others still inside the spacecraft. The aliens returned her, but hundreds of people are still in the spacecraft, some having been there for years. Afterward, the sheriff returns to his car, looks at a missing person flyer of his wife, and wonders if aliens abducted her. In the cabin, the friends barricade the house and board the windows. Minutes later, they hear a noise outside the front door. Seth looks through the peephole but only sees pitch black. April looks and sees the same thing until the alien steps back, and she realizes they've been staring into the alien's black eye. Terrified, April jumps back in fear and tells them the alien is right outside the door. The doorknob is being turned from the outside, so Seth grabs a shotgun and points it at the door. Suddenly, the door flies open, and Seth shoots into the bright light flooding the entryway. Sheriff Murphy and Deputy Mitchell tell the group to put their hands up. The sheriff asks April why they abandoned their car by the side of the road, so she tells him everything, and Mitchell laughs at her story. Seconds later, April says she'll show Murphy the alien in the pool. The sheriff asks her and Kyle to accompany him while Mitchell stays with Seth and Melanie. Melanie opens a medicine canister and ingests one capsule. Outside, the alien is no longer in the pool. Then, they hear a crashing sound from the garage. The sheriff then tells April and Kyle to get back in the house. Inside the garage, Murphy walks up to the attic and accidentally touches alien blood. He finds Rusty whining on the floor with his intestines spilling out. Suddenly, a shadow zips past him, and he turns around and shoots, but it escapes through a window. He looks out the window and sees the creature moving in the tree branches. In the police car, Mitchell continues mocking Seth, who is handcuffed in the back seat. Murphy returns and tells Mitchell that April 
April and her friends are telling the truth. Mitchell sees the flyer with Murphy's missing wife on it and tells him to move on after 10 years of looking for her. Murphy believes what happened to his wife is what happened to Lex. When the sheriff turns the headlights on, they see the alien in front of the car. The alien puts the sheriff in a trance and makes him shoot Mitchell in the stomach. He then points the shotgun at himself and blows his head off. Seth fearfully screams and tries to get out of the car while covered in the sheriff's blood. Minutes later, April gets Seth out of the car, and they return to the cabin. Inside the cabin, Seth explains how the alien controlled the sheriff's mind. He frantically waves the gun around and tells Melanie and Kyle to join him back to town. Seth wants April to stay because the aliens only want her, but Melanie and Kyle refuse to leave her behind. Seth is adamant about escaping, so he leaves the cabin alone. After Seth leaves, the cabin starts to shake. Red light floods the room, and a loud shrill sound disorients the three friends. They fall to the ground covering their bleeding ears. When the sound stops, the floorboards suddenly begin lifting off, so they get up and run to the basement door. After April and Melanie enter the basement, Kyle closes the door and barricades it with a bookshelf. He wants the girls to survive. So despite April's protests, he goes to the kitchen to grab a knife. He stops in the middle of the stairs when he sees the alien entering the cabin. He gets its attention and runs to the bathroom, where he hides in the bathtub. Meanwhile, Seth hears a growling noise in the woods. He shoots aimlessly around him until he runs out of bullets. Suddenly, an alien attacks him, shredding his clothes and covering him in scratches. A bright red light comes from above, and he fearfully handcuffs himself to a tree branch. When the white beam shines on him, he vanishes, leaving his arm hanging on the branch. In the basement, April and Melanie reminisce about the happy moments they had in the cabin as kids. April sees the empty medicine canister roll out of Melanie's hand, saying she might have taken too much sleeping medicine. Melanie cries as she apologizes to April for ending her life this way to avoid being abducted. In the bathroom, Kyle hears footsteps and jumps out of the bathtub, but he's all alone. He stares at his reflection in the mirror. Then an alien arm bursts through and grabs him. In the basement, April notices the sound of the spacecraft becoming more distant. She leaves the basement and sees the trashed cabin. The power comes back on, and she finds a diamond ring and a pool of blood on the floor. When April realizes the aliens have taken Kyle, she runs out the door screaming for the spacecraft to return. Desperate, April lights Seth's firework and points it in the spacecraft's direction as she cries, wanting them to take her. Suddenly, bright red light surrounds her. Then a beam of white light pulls her into the sky. In the spacecraft, April regains consciousness while cocooned in sticky black webbing. She tears the webbing and breaks free of the restraints. Then, she walks to the end of the tunnel and sees an alien megastructure the spacecrafts fly into. Elsewhere, Seth is strapped to a vertical gurney and wincing in pain. A mechanical arm shoots an alien insect onto his body. The insect crawls inside his belly button, and he cries out in pain. The component then shoots lasers and burns a symbol onto his chest. A few seconds later, the gurney turns around, and he hears a whirring screw-like probe moving closer to his rear. The probe drills into his rear end and quickly pulls out, spraying Seth's blood everywhere, ending his life. Meanwhile, April finds Kyle and helps him out of the black webbing. She cries and apologizes for declining his proposal, and she should have said yes. Kyle finally wakes up, and they share a hug. The couple notices the aliens watching them, and one points its arm as a white light shines around them. Moments later, April and Kyle wake up in the middle of the woods. They get up, hold hands, and walk together. Later, the couple hears people in vehicles nearby and walks toward them. In a clearing, the couple sees the military, and April asks for help with a smile on her face. As April approaches, she's shot in the stomach and falls to the ground. Kyle tries to stop the soldiers, but he's shot multiple times and falls next to her. As they lay on the ground, April hands Kyle the diamond ring, and he slips it onto her finger. Then, the soldiers finish the job and shoot them at close range. Several feet away, a high-ranking military official breathes a man in a black suit of last night's incident. He says the storm caused the crash, and there were minimal casualties. At the crash site, men in hazmat suits clear the debris while scientists keep a living alien inside a capsule. Meanwhile, soldiers toss April and Kyle into a hole in the ground and burn their bodies before burying them. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.